Oh my God. <laughs> of the Red Cup Review, I'm your host, Rob Banks. I am here with Bane or Bazane. <laughs> Let's not stand on ceremony here, Mr. Banks. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? After a two week hiatus, it is good to be back with you guys. I have been in living in up the upside down the last two weeks. Um, however, I do want to say if you're a first time watcher to please subscribe to the Red Cup Review, like the video, it really helps, and comment away. And if you're catching us on the replay, hopefully you'll be sitting in a car or watching this shit on your way to work. All right. Uh, I'm here with Bane. Bane, what's going on? How are things in Gotham? It's buzzing to you. <laughs> So uh, it's your problem. Peace has cost you your strength. Victory <laughs> has defeated you. <laughs> so, how are things in the collector's world there, Bizane? Uh, not too bad. It's been very Batman centric this week. I found I broke this guy, but I seem to like buying his toys. <laughs> uh, look, I even put his, his uh, damaged uh, mask on to display him. Like it's like he just fought. Uh, and he's got the exactly, <laughs> and uh, he's got the kryptonite uh, 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 ring thingy on his fist. It wouldn't work against me though. Only uh, Boy Scouts in uh, blue pajamas. What do you think of that uh, Batman so, uh, figure? This... Is it good? Oh, he's good. He's good. <laughs> what I expected. He's good. And I also got uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, two pack. Nice. How's the articulation yeah, on that for you? It's good. I mean, he's got the spits, and he's got the uh, the ankle rocks a little bit. Uh, it's uh, he's got the uh, double jointed uh, the knees too, but uh, a little limited on the biceps. How's the uh, the overall? Uh, hey. Well, look, he, he's, he came. Look, I broke him. <laughs> I broke him. This is what I always do to Batman. I break him. But he's okay. He's better again. So he's a good figure. I, I recommend him. He comes with, uh, with who's this guy? Uh, uh, well, I forget his name. The leader. What's his name? <laughs> You're the turtle fan. Leonardo. Leonardo. He would, he, he'd be a low ranking member in the uh, League of Shadows. Leonardo. No, it's Donatello. Leonardo. No, it's not Donatello. <laughs> Leonardo. So that's a pretty big. Uh, uh, that's a pretty big hole you got there, Bane. Bazane. Yes, it is. Bazane to you, Mister Banks. Unbelievable. All right, uh, that's pretty awesome. My haul of the week. Well, last two weeks, I got the uh, the Batman figure as well. And it's an excellent figure. I highly recommend getting it. And I already put in my order for the Harker Customs custom cape uh, with the wire in it. And I'll be getting a uh, little blue booty shorts form. Also this week, and the review is out now, so go and watch it, is the Cyclops figure from Mezco, which is an excellent figure. It's uh, I, I knew it was going to be good. I didn't expect it to be great. It's pretty damn great. He's got... A lot of cool different head sculpts. This is pretty awesome. The light up feature sucks, as does everything. Uh, light up goes, uh, and it, that's not just my opinion because I hate light up features. Um, you actually have to pop the head off, twist the neck out, turn the switch on, then put everything back together just to get it to light up, and then so on and so forth to turn it off. So that's a huge fail, but the figure itself is a huge win because he's really colorful and he looks great next to this gentleman right here, right? So building the X-Men team so slowly but surely. So I was able to squeeze that review in. Uh, for those that are uh, that are in the know and follow the official Red Cup review, The Rebellion, on Facebook, you guys should be in that group. I didn't announce this, but I had to uh, I had to disappear for a week. We had a death in the family, and uh, it was pretty troubling. But I'm not going to bring us down. I'm actually going to say that, see this shirt right here? I'm not that big of a, you know, you guys, I'm, Wolverine is like the one trick pony, but the, the person in the family that did pass away actually got me this shirt. So I'm wearing this shirt tonight to commemorate uh, his memory. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Chouse to Danny Lee, Edwin Diaz, uh, and CM Brock. They're all watching. They're all with us. Glad you guys could join us. 
Um, I've been out of the loop, guys. I really don't have a show set up tonight. We're going to be talking some collectibles. We're going to get right into the collectibles of probably the last two weeks. If there's anything you guys want us to comment on, please comment in the comment section because I am totally out of the loop for what's cool and what's in. So Baz is going to be leading that part of the show. And you guys throw in your comments here and there when you can. If there's something you want to, we want to talk, hear us talk about, you want to talk with us, whatever. All right, Zane, are you ready to talk about the collectibles of the last two weeks? Sure. You, are you going to uh, Sideshow, the website? Yeah, we're going to do Sideshow. We're going to do Mezco, and that should pretty much cover everything. Unless there's something you, you okay, want to cool. bring up and screen share. Then you'd be like, shut up. I want to screen share something. Go to the I also channel. saw the first two episodes of uh, Titans. Oh, yes. We will be talking Titans tonight, too. I didn't see the second episode. I saw the first one. All right. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about that first episode. <clears throat> Bam. Here. And there we go. All right. Cool. Here we go. Collectibles of the week. Let's see. Or of the last two weeks, that is. We're on the Sideshow site. Sideshow is getting kind of weird to me lately, guys. It seems to me like they're... Um, they got like weird collectibles uh, for sale now. Things that are just kind of out of left field. I get. I don't know if the hundred all time favorite movies book to me it just seems weird. It seems like we're grasping at straws here. It seems like ever since Susan left uh, Sideshow that things have been a little different around there. But anyways, they got these pre orders up for these uh, Ghostbuster statues. They are one fourth scale, so they're ginormous. That's why they're four hundred dollars. They're actually. Oh my God. He looks like he's had a rough night. <laughs> looks like he's been uh, taking on the League of Shadows there. Oh. Right? So you got your, your yeah. Venkman. And uh, I mean, $1,600. Looks like he had a rough night with the cocaine. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put it past this, this crew of characters to be banging it up during the filming of this movie. Oh, uh, Dan Aykroyd. You know, he was on the Joe Rogan uh, show recently. Yeah, I can't wait to hear that one. I've been um, I've been off my podcast kick lately because I've been listening to some books on audio, and I recently finished World War Z on audiobook, and now I'm doing Ready mm -hmm. Player One. So I'm on a little bit of hiatus through that. Head scope looks good on this. <clears throat> looks pretty good. I don't know, 1,600. Four of these, what, what to me is funny is that where are you going to find – Room for four one fourth scale statues uh, of the Ghostbusters mm -hmm. in your house if that's like the only thing that's going on there. This one up for pre order this week, Baz. This is like the big reveal. The the Pennywise from Hot Toys went up. I, I, that's it, I heard the movie wasn't too good. The second one, really? Yeah, it's kind of long, three hours, and it's kind of like uh, it's not that great. It's getting mixed reviews. Mixed reviews. What do you think? Mixed about? reviews. He looks good. The hair looks good. I like the sculpted hair look. Uh, I'm digging the costume. I'm digging the price actually for two sixty seven. It's actually ain't too bad considering there's two head sculpts and stuff, and the intricacy of the costume. I think it looks pretty good. Let's see. Let's let's cycle through a couple of these pictures. He comes with a skateboard. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people like instant pre order. This looks amazing. I'm not a horror guy, so I don't do horror figures. But I guess if I did, I this I guess would be a must have. I don't know. Guys in the chat, what the hell do you think? Is this a must-have figure if you're a horror guy? I know a couple of people um, in the Red Cup uh, Facebook page were all over this. Like, oh, I ordered this. It's great. So I'm kind of I'm kind of penny-wised out. Yeah. I mean, he looks good. But then again, I'm kind of like, yeah, all right, whatever. Mm. You know, the character mm -hmm. to me doesn't really speak to me. But, you know, it looks all right. Uh, Danny Lee says, Sideshow is turning into Hot Topics. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it, Dad, Mister Lee. Um, it, that's kind of what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like a hot, like a virtual hot topic store. Uh, very good, very good call. Um, what's going on, Rob? How are you? Uh, sport a beard, cool and bane. Yes, two new looks. Yes, I'm going into like uh, this is like this time of the year is when I go the bearded version of of Rob, and I kind of stick with that uh, through Halloween for the most part. It's not going to get much, a little bit thicker than this, but I'm not going to be going like full crazy beard. Uh, let's see. Let's get off of Pennywise. Let's see what else they got going on here. So that was the big thing this week. This is kind of cool. I like it when companies do this, as always. I kind of like this. 
I'm not getting this, but I, I like it. I like seeing things like this. The Doctor No James Bond, one of my favorite. Oh, he looks good. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Like it. I think it looks cool. I, I looks love cool. these other companies are doing shit like this. I think it's just awesome. Uh, and that's so so Bond, right? He comes with a pistol case. Those those the the original slap a bitch James Bond. <laughs> he didn't care. He didn't care if you're about your gender. If you deserved a smack, he would give you one. <laughs> I I love the background. That that the backdrop, like, right? Yeah, yes, that, 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 kind of pose with like the. the, the you know, yeah. Oh, that's great! Oh, that looks yo. That is awesome! Wow, that is so cool. So let's see if we got any other pictures here. All right. And Connery's friggin' Bond, man. I mean, I, I I like the different versions of Bond for different reasons, but Connery's awesome. This looks cool. You know, you can have him like lighting a cigarette. An, an actual figure that actually comes with a cigarette. Imagine that these days. I think it's, that's freaking cool as hell. And 250 I mean, it's a little high. I get they're paying for likeness rights on that. But it is free shipping, so that's pretty cool. So, you know, 250 free shipping, not bad. The head sculpt. Could be a little bit better, but it isn't Hot Toys. You know, it is Big Chief Studios, and that's the same studio Baz that's doing um, uh, Laurel and Hardy. So that's cool. Oh, okay. Uh, never been in uh, Rob just defenses. Never been in Hot Topics. Is that like Big Lots? No. Uh, it's um, it uh, Hot Topic is like um, uh, you ever seen like a rave, right? Or like. We're kind of around the same age. Like raves were kind of big when we were like in our like between for, for me between the ages of 18 and, and like 25, 27. It's like someone threw up like glow sticks and like heavy metal t-shirts and punk rock stuff and just all kinds of shit. It's like somebody took a giant shit, but it came out like uh Heavy metal, punk, sashes, uh, whoopee cushions. It's like everything, but it's like goth. It's like an everything kind of goth type thing. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's get off Bond. Back to back to the Sideshow site. Now we're going to be doing the Bane voice all friggin' night. <laughs> it's Bane. Oh, and they have Dr. No. And you say Dr. No, but I say Dr. Yes. He's much cheaper. 210. And cool. I look. I think it works. Looks good. I don't Bond even movie. remember that character. This was the very first James Bond movie. That's the first movie. I know. Yeah. I just. I don't. He's not memorable, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, is he the, the one? Guy. Wait. Is he the guy who tried to laser his dick off? No. No, right? that was Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Has he a thing against dicks. Guy. Oh, he's got a backdrop too. He's got the cage with the tarantula. Nice. The champagne and the cigarette. Cool. I like it. I, I think seeing shit like this is, is, is cool as hell. I, I mean, I wish I had more room to just buy and money to buy everything. You know, but yeah, no, no more. Uh, oh, wait, I lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I'm no talking about. Room. Speaking of room and speaking of things that are different in the, in, in, the, um, everyone calls their fucking hangout the Bat Cave, right? Because everyone just loves Batman. This is like, I'm not calling my, my hangout the Bat Cave. I got to come up with like a cool name for it, but. Since we moved in, it's been like the you know the fortress of solitude. So in the fortress of solitude, uh, which is basically my basement, um, I did something to this week that really kind of like broke my heart. Uh, let me stop screen sharing for a moment. I want to share a moment with the audience. Stop screen sharing and share your emotions. <laughs> um, I did something this week that broke my heart. I'm actually doing it tomorrow. I'm selling. Well, it's already kind of sold. I sold my Hot Toys Batmobile. I sold the Hot Toys Batmobile. Uh, I sold it for seven hundred and fifty dollars. I bought it for six hundred about a year and a half ago. I never had the room to display it, and then I was buying these module cases, and I actually put the order in for them, and I got four six L module cases coming. They're really big and nice, and uh, that was pretty pricey. So to offset the cost of that, um, I would have had to buy an additional Maju case just to house the Batmobile. So I sold the Batmobile off to offset the cost um, of the Maju cases. So broke my heart. Yeah, yes, the eighty nine. Robert just the eighty nine. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're the type of collector like if it's going to be in a box in a closet and it's not displayed, you have no use for it. And I get that. 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, Kev? Yes, the 89, Rob. Uh, I sold the 89 Batman Batmobile from Hot Toys. And um, a guy's coming tomorrow and picking it up. Hey, Archie's with us, too. What's up, man? Holy crap, I made it. What's up, man? Hello, Archie. We're talking about heartbreaking stories of uh, of selling Hot Toy 89 Batmobiles in pristine condition that was never taken out of the box. And uh, I bought it from a second-hand dude. Uh, like for, like I, I traveled to this guy's house about a year and a half ago in Jersey, picked it up. And it's it's let me tell you something. The guy that's buying it from me, that's picking it up tomorrow, was like, "Hey, could you take some more pitches for me?" So I opened it up after not opening it up for like eight months, and was like, "Damn, this frigging thing is majestic looking," and it's the type of uh, it's the type of collectible that just blows the doors. Like when people come in, they're like, "Holy shit," you know. But listen, man, you got to do what's the mature decision. You know, buy another three hundred dollar case or two hundred and fifty dollars, whatever the hell it was, just for the Batmobile. Or sell the Batmobile and pretty much pay for your cases. So that's kind of where the thought came from. Plus, I hadn't had it on display for over a year. So it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, you know? What do you think, Baz? No, I get it. Yeah, yeah, kind of. But to, it is. You know, I don't know. Like, uh, me and you both have a, a, you know, a love for that uh, uh, 89 movie. So I don't know. It, it would be hard for me to sell it. Well, that, yeah, know, exactly. Being such a big fan, but. Uh, I don't know. I get it. Like, you know, you, you said you can't display it, so what's the point? Like, I understand your reasoning. Yeah, and it just would have been just too much more money getting the additional case and all that, so I uh. said, fuck it, man. You know, it is what it is, and I had to let it go. It's the, it's, it'll be it'll forever be the one that got away. But um, anyways, on to bigger and brighter things and yes. for the future. So let's go back to the screen share and scroll down because there's something that came out uh, last week. That we didn't get a chance to look at. And there's a poison ivy all the way up top. I want you to go back to later. Poison ivy all the yes. way up top. All the way up top. Yeah. There we go. Poison ivy. Kotobukiya. Seems oh, like these small statues are now like 125. That's it. That's how much they cost now for the small statues. That's like the going rate. But uh, she looks. I don't know. She looks good. I'm not a fan of anime, but she does look pretty. Yeah. Hmm. That's a possible. That's a wow, possible. She, you uh, like that? Yeah, I like those legs. <laughs> I like the stems too. <laughs> <laughs> nice stems. <laughs> yeah, she looks good. She looks good. I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of the anime style, but um, if I was, she'd be my collection because I love the bat, uh, the girl bat villains. I like the girls of DC just in general. But you know us here. We're all about the DC guys. But switching over to Marvel for a second, <clears throat> and this is also like with some news of the week. Uh, news this week. This is last week's news. Mysterio went up for pre-order at 260, and the uh, the the action figure community went completely ape shit because everyone's going. This is a must-have. Oh my god, instant pre-order. Um, not for me. I'm not getting this. To me, Mysterio. Although the movie was great, um, it's just the Mysterio character himself doesn't really resonate enough with me to ha to spend the the hot toy type money. And it was a huge deal. At least on my end, I was like, "Yo, whack! You make they're making you guys pay two sixty for a light up feature in the ball in the ball. The ball on his head lights up, but there's no uh, Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt." And Hot Toys said that yes, in the beginning of the week, we are releasing it with a Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt. The fans have spoken, and everyone rejoiced. And then, as if a thousand voices all rejoiced, and then cried out in anguish, and were suddenly silenced. Hot Toys yesterday said, oh, we're having problems with licensing, so we're taking the picture down. So he, after all, might not be coming with a Jake Gyllenhaal head sculpt. Oh, wow. Uh, so the way to play with our hearts and emotions there, Hot Toys. Yeah, would you display him? Would, would you put him with the uh, with the dome? I mean, I, I mean think he's more iconic with, with the, the dome head. He is, but I'm not going to see if I'm going to buy a Hot Toys figure. I kind of – there's only very few exceptions – in Hot Toys that I think can get away with, like, the non-human head sculpts, like Darth mm -hmm. Vader, is way more iconic than Mysterio. I mean, mm -hmm. Boba Fett is way more iconic than Mysterio. And that's it in my collection as far as masked characters, like, that don't have head sculpts go, you know? Uh, like, 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 human portraits and stuff. So, yeah, but, like, again, for me, as a great... And it does, it looks great. It really looks great. Uh, to me, it's more like um, a big Marvel legend at that point then if it, if it lacks like the paint detailing and the super realistic head sculpt it, to me it's just a 
a two hundred and fifty dollars Marvel Legend at that point. I still haven't seen the movie yet. Did uh, Jake uh, really put a stamp on the uh, the character? Like, did he really like you know? It was good, man. It was one of Marvel's put, best villains. Yeah. They really develop him a lot. They give him a lot of yeah. character development. He's he is tied into Iron Man. His whole backstory is Iron Man, but he's yeah, developed. See. That's you why know? I have a problem with MCU Spider Man. So yeah. that's, well, that's I mean, my like the whole look, man, at this point. At this point, if we're going to complain about the whole MCU Spider Man being tied into Iron Man, the entire MCU is pretty much Iron Man's fault and creation. Everything, you know, mm. it's like straight up, everyone has a, every villain is a Iron Man villain kind of. So uh, one thing bugs me about Mysterio says Rob, just a fan, and I don't know. What that what it is? Is it the theme? Um, not as good as the nineteen sixty seven animated Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I first saw him too. Was that uh, was the animated uh, sixty seven series? Um, he uh, he has this this seam on the dome, which is the same seam that is plaguing the Stan Lee figure that came out, and they're calling it Seam Gate. Because there's no reason for a seam to be on this, because that's kind of cheap. Like they should just have a, a, a the sphere should be totally spherical. And uh, if they're gonna do the obviously the light up feature, you just put it underneath, like un underneath the neck area, kind of up right. in here. You leave this whole area open, so you can just place the dome on whatever light up feature is going on in there. But there's this seam that mm. is running. It's making it look kind of like to me. You know what it reminds me of seeing that seam? You ever been in um remember like it being in a supermarket when you're a kid? Uh -huh. you, walk, you put the quarter in and, and you, exactly yeah. you put the quarter in and it's got like that plastic thing that comes out that has like the little NFL helmet in it or something yeah, or, yeah. or whatever. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah. So uh those are cool. I'm gonna check back real quick in the comics, Wolverine. Ever get payback from Old Man Logan? I don't know. There was an, an Old Man Logan uh, sequel, but I don't. I never read it. You want to hear something funny? The last time I got one of those NFL stickers from the uh, from the machines, uh, it was actually uh, I got the friggin' Seattle Seahawks. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember me and you. We used to play uh, uh, with Joe Montana's uh, what you call football for Sega, right? Yep. And uh, whenever they would like, you would leave the game on. They would just like have like a, a fake game going on in the background. It would always be one team, whatever team versus Seattle. Remember, <laughs> they would always say <laughs> the San Francisco 49ers versus Seattle. It, so we, yeah. it was like a running right. joke for, uh, for years with us. Yeah, word. Yeah. That's oh, Seattle. That was the, those were the good old days, man. Yeah. Um. That's, I don't know. That's it. That's all I got here as far as like, oh, yeah, I wanted to comment on this because I know Darth Castle is going to watch this tomorrow. Uh, shout out to Darth Castle and all those guys. And I know the Batman statue collector uh, who's actually visiting New York right now, and he's doing his whole tour around New York for the first time. He's from oh, Kansas, that's a, actually. That's that statue. What does he have? Is that, the, is that the Captain Cold's freeze gun? Yeah, it's exclusive, his Captain Cold freeze gun. And I got to tell you, I think this looks kind of goofy. I think it looks goofy. I don't like the pose. The arms are a little long. The arms are a little long. The hands look a little too animated and weird looking to me. Yeah. It's, uh, a little, it's exaggerated a little bit. Like, yeah, like his, his knee is up way too high. I, I don't know. It's just to me, it just seems kind of goofy and weird. Like, like look at the size of his hand. No, well, it's nothing beats nothing's worse. Actually, is worse than uh, what you call it. Uh, the dude from Justice League who played the Flash. <laughs> the way he ran, that guy. Oh yeah, he's like throwing the lightning as he's running. Like it, it's yeah, it, it, dude. That was like uh, the Woody Allen version of the Flash. <laughs> Ezra, Ezra Miller, uh, Ezra Miller. Yeah. Oh my God, Ezra Miller's a bitch. I think that I think that the whole idea behind the um, I think the whole idea behind the uh, the Snyder cut needs to be put to bed too. Personally, um, I think it would be cool if it came out. I would watch it. I'd be interested to watch it, but at this point, it's like, do I really need to see of a, just a different version of a not that good of a movie that I already saw? Like, I already saw half the movie or seventy five percent of the movie. Do I need to rewatch a, a you know another version of it? I don't know. At this point, I know there's like a big out. You're not going to get it. the you're not going to get the uh, sequel though, the the finale. So uh, you know, what's the point? 
And at this point, it's like, move on, move on, move along here. There's nothing to see, in my opinion, is that it. That is it is. Warner Brothers Kev's always Matrix, chicken. One of these man. motherfuckers was stoked about Pennywise. There you go. Kev's Matrix. Finally ordered. The movie was a lot of fun. There you go. So, Baz, your your comment is invalid. Kev Matrix says it's a good movie. So I didn't even see the first the second one. one? Or the first? Oh, okay. No, this Maybe is the second one. This is like a one from part two or some some. I heard it was like almost three hours. I don't know if I could deal with another three hours sitting in the freaking theater. You were um, you were what you call it? You were uh, you 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 sat through end game, right? Yeah, and yeah, you, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't enjoy that either. <laughs> that was a little too long. Snyder cut is not that great. Now J.J. Abrams is in charge. Ugh. All DC. I don't know. I like J.J. Abrams. You got the wrong guy, bro. Uh, you know, I, I like. I think his movies are fun. Okay. They're fun, but stupid. Whatever. They're not that they're um, fucking stupid. We're going to really do this now? No. no. I, don't really, <laughs> I don't feel like it. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, Batman, the uh, Super Knight or Supreme Knight. Did you oh, get Supreme your uh, Did you get your Supreme Knight on pre order there, Baz? Hell's fucking yeah! Yeah, word. Uh, I think it looks good, man. I think this looks freaking killer. Did you open up your? your it's still in the It's still in the box. Still in the box. Just sell it to somebody. <laughs> somebody really wants it. Sell it to them. Um. So here we go. Where the? Where are you? Come on. Where are you? Here. <laughs> Old man, grumpy ass Batman. Nothing like grumpy old Batman with a gun. Get off my lawn! <laughs> Get off my lawn. That's the uh, Gran Turismo uh, uh, Batman. I love this though. I think the head sculpt looks looks excellent. Where are you? I think it looks excellent. I'm all I'm all about old Batman. I think that that's a great great sculpt there. I like the fact that the haircut is a little you know different too. It's kind of got like that falling down look, you know. Yeah. A little Michael Douglas thrown in there. I'm kind of, kind of digging it. Um, uh, yeah, I pre-ordered this too. This is still available, and uh, I don't know. Can't wait to get it. I'm enjoying the two Batman that I have now, though. So it's fine. It's fine. Uh, wait, so that's it. So this is like after this version. That's it. You, that's you it. think they're gonna stop doing Batman? Well, they're gonna put. You know, this is like their Batman proper. Like their three stages of Batman proper. They'll probably put that to bed. But uh, I can tell you guys. And they need to do freaking Superman, dude. Come yeah, on. I know. There's a big cry outcry for Superman. Mezco has a problem where they don't want to make Robin, they don't want to make Nightwing, and they don't. Uh, they they kind of ignore Superman a little bit. And I know that their excuses for Robin and Nightwing is they don't like the character. They think it's stupid. They think the idea of Batman having any sidekicks is stupid. Who said that? Mezco. Like this comes directly from them. They're like, we don't like it. We're never making a Robin figure, and there's a huge demand for Robin. And they're like, we're just going to make the figures we like. And it's like, you know, okay, you know, as a company, you guys make gr the greatest six-inch action figures that I've ever had in my collection. Uh, not my favorite line, though. My favorite line is still DC Universe Classics. However, as a company, you're just a bunch of jerk-offs. <laughs> Put it at that, all right? I'll be honest. Uh but that's I, I, it is what it is, you know. I'm gonna collect that. I'm gonna collect the hell out of your stuff because I love what you do, do. But it's a company. Eh, you leave a lot to be desired. Um, I, I don't know. I like it. I'm all about it. I'm cool with the old bat. Oh, this is what I wanted to point out to you guys. Uh, you see the outfit here? I'm trying to like zoom in as much as I can. This outfit is going to be made of the same exact material as the um, the uh, special ops Punisher. So the whole outfit's going to be like a really thick uh, kind of – it's not like that faux leather that they have or pleather that they have in some of their figures, like on the side of uh, on the side of Cyclops there. You see the shininess, right? It's not like that. It's like, uh, it's like a thicker material, but it should be a little bit looser around the body, so you should be able to get the poses you want because my Sovereignite uh, – um, Overnight, I'm sorry. My special ops Punisher poses great, and he holds the poses too. And the outfit doesn't really get wrinkled or anything like that because it's really like a durable kind of like thin rubber or something. Uh, Kez Matrix looks cool. When's New York Comic Con? Uh, October fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth, I believe. And sixth, uh, the Joker comes out. Oh, okay. So it's no. So then it's that's the Friday, right? So it's third. It's Thursday. So it's the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. It's four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday. 
And uh, I'm going on Thursday. I'm just a Thursday guy because it's it's really a friggin' headache. A lot of people go nuts about New York Comic Con. Oh, I can't wait. It's a giant friggin' headache. And it's like go to another local con where you could actually talk to people and not have to smell people and bump into them constantly and get Why a- do people like overcrowded, inconvenient things? Yeah, I don't you know, know, man. I guess it's hype, bro. It's like, oh, it's the big con. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be great. And then it's like, you know, I hear this shit. Mike is nerdy. What's up? Good to see you. I hear this shit all the time from other, the other YouTubers I roll with, guys like the Paradox Nerd, uh, sometimes the Darth Castle guys. Um, and, you know, uh, Paradox Nerd calls me sour grapes once in a while. And I'm like, look, I'm not being sour grapes. I'm being realistic. I'm not just going to sit here and beat the drum. Yay, everything is fun. Uh, it is fun. See, here's something that's fun. Art G is going to message me for New York Comic Con, and we're going to fucking meet in person. And I'm actually looking more forward to cool. that than I am looking forward to, like, half the other shit I'm going to see besides, like, you know, seeing, like... Good luck, <laughs> good luck, good luck standing in an, in an aisle for more than four seconds. Yeah, I'll, we'll meet in, the, in, the, in the, the, the foyer or something and, like, you know, bullshit for, like, uh, you know, ten minutes or something or whatever the case may be. I do. Uh, you know what I do like about uh, NYCC is the... Uh, Artist Alley. They always have. They always have every. They have everybody there. Yeah, the Artist Alley is really good there. Yeah. It's so secluded though that you could spend like an entire day in Artist Alley and not see anything else. Yeah, you could just so go there and stay there all day. You know, and uh, and I got to go there and I got to do work. It's not like to me this is like it's fun work, but it's still work. And the, the missus is coming with me, so I actually have a camera person this time around. So she'll be. Um, hanging out and filming and I won't seem like such a creep when I walk up to people and ask for interviews because I'll have um you know my lady with me and that'll be cool. So you're gonna are you gonna talk to our friend uh artist Billy Tucci? Yes I will be definitely talking to Billy Tucci. He's still gotta get me my zombie samba uh book mm -hmm. and I'll try to get like I'm gonna for for artists I noticed that like when we do artist interviews and I'm gonna ask you guys this now while we have a few people in the it looks we have a nice amount of people in the room right now. Uh, what do you guys enjoy? I'm going to be going to this convention and I'm like, I want to get interviews with people, right? So I'm going to be getting uh, getting interviews with like uh, the Cryptozoic people. I'm going to be getting interviews with um, with Sideshow. I already have that set up. Um, Mezco doesn't grant interviews. We already spoke about that company. But uh, artists, writers, like um, – what do we like? Like, what do you guys want to see? Like, I, I noticed that every time I do like an artist interview or a writer interview, I don't really get a lot of views. So I don't know if there's a lot of demand for that. And if I do happen to talk to an artist or writer, I, I don't want to be like, so what got you into comics? And isn't it cool here at Comic-Con? Like every other fucking person says over and over <laughs> again. So it's like, what would be cool? What do you guys want to hear me ask these people? You know, like, I mean, I got a month ahead of time. So uh, Super 7, yes, I will definitely uh, hunt down and track down Super 7. So, uh, yeah, companies. Okay, so it seems like companies is like what people want to hit. Jim Lee. Yeah, good luck with that, bro. You can't get within five feet of that guy. Oh, <laughs> feet, rather. Uh, the big name guys is kind of – it's going to be almost impossible for stuff like that uh, just because they're just so bogged down with stuff. But um, but if I did run into Jim Lee, what would you want me to ask him? Maybe I could use that question to parlay into something else, you know? Got to remember, guys, I'm only at like 1,250 subscribers. If I had like 5,000 subscribers, I'd be able to – I'd be working with Sideshow. They would be sending me statues for giveaways for you guys and shit. So that's another thing again, like to subscribe. Like when I went to the Florida Supercon, man, I, started, I was hanging out with friggin' uh, – what's his name? Jim Starlin, the creator of, of Thanos. Nice. And it was just like me and him chilling, just shooting the shit. So it's like, you know – but he's not like superstar level. He's not hyped as like one of the you know superstar artist types, you know, right now. Even though you know he is a popular guy. I mean, he's the creator of Thanos, but uh, he's not like the superstar name like Jim Lee or um, even Snyder, right? Scott Snyder. Yeah, like yeah. those guys. I mean, those guys get lines. Yeah, it's a little yeah, impossible like, to get like the really like super in popular guys right now. Like if there was like a dude like you really like growing up. You know, yeah. but I also do this stuff for me too, though. Like, I like I was talking to the, my wife about this, and I'm like, she's like, "Look, you like talking to Billy Tucci? You think it's fucking cool? You grew up looking at him in Wizard Magazine? Who gives a shit what, what the the people online think?" Uh, oh, Kyle just uh, hit me up and said, "Hey, have a great show, man." So I guess he wasn't able to join us tonight. Kyle was supposed to come on tonight. Uh, yeah, he's out tonight, so whatever. Oh, uh, cool. Yo, Kyle, check it out. Just by coincidence, my uh, my girlfriend picked this up on Zulily for like 13 bucks. 
Yes, and he designed yeah. it, so that's awesome. He designed this one in particular, right? Yep. Yeah, Cryptozoic's uh, Linda Carter, uh, Wonder Woman. She looks awesome in in, uh, in person. Yeah, word. These are these are so much cooler than pops. So I just want to put that up. No, yeah, hell yeah, totally cool than pops. So and, uh, the mis- like, yeah, mis- something that's affordable but still cute. Yeah. The missus was telling me, who gives a shit? Do what you want. You want to talk to these people? You want to parlay the red cup into talking to artists and writers and guys you like to talk to? Don't worry about it. Just do what you like. And I'm like, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I get that. There is, you know, there is a sense of that. But I also kind of want to, you know, I want to, like, do for the, the, the people that actually watch, too. So Archie says we will partner, and then we will have over 3,000 subs from his mouth to God's ears or the universe's ears or whatever you want to say. Rob Solo, how come no more Mezco interviews? Um... I don't know. They wouldn't even answer that question. Uh, I approached them multiple times. At, uh, first of all, my my uh, I have a very strenuous relationship with them, as I've explained before. So me and Mezco don't really get along, so to say. But uh, at the same time, I've gone up to them and been like, hey, interview up. Nope, no interviews, no questions. And I'm like, nothing? Like, you, nothing. Not like, why would you do this figure? Hey, the Michael Keaton Batman's coming out. That was an awesome pick. Uh where did the con- idea come from that? Like, how did the, you know, nothing. They're like, nope, you can't talk to us. Just sit. The, the toys are over there. Look at them and then get out of here. They're like, uh, they think their shit doesn't stink. Put it that way. Like, they're the creators over there. Uh, if you walk up to them and shake their hand, they'll be personable to you. They're not jerks. But as far as their company goes, they kind of think like, you know, yeah, we don't need to kind of talk to you. Like, just look at the toys and beat it. So there's your answer. Um, let's see. QMX uh, Star Trek Big Chief Studios, Doctor uh, Who maybe. Uh, yeah, if, if QMX is there, QMX is, is a pain in the ass too. They don't grant interviews. I tried talking to them too, and the guy's like, I don't, I'll don't. i talk to you, and then you can go and talk on camera by yourself and say what I said to you. So they, they're they pain in the asses too. Um, let's see. Ask G- G- Jim Lee if he wipes standing up <laughs> or if he pees sitting down perhaps. Uh, interview other YouTubers, maybe. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, other YouTubers. Art G is a big ass YouTuber that does uh, Marvel Legend hunts, and he does like Star Wars Black series and shit. So I'm definitely going to be getting an interview with, uh, with him. He's in the chat right now. So you know, there you go. Um, oh, cosplayers. Okay, let's see. Talk to hot cosplay girls, and that equals ratings. Yeah. I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's kind of got to happen. And, um, and no female shady nowadays don't need the aggravation. Yeah. Uh, sure. um, nah, I will not get, get the sexual harassment thing because, um, it'll be easier to, to walk up to the, first of all, cosplayers want that they, they're, they're cosplaying and they have like Instagram accounts cause they want to get noticed. They want guys or girls to buy their pictures and put them up on walls. I've actually interviewed cosplayers when I first started red cup I went to my first comic convention and did my first set of reviews uh all the um the footage got corrupted so i couldn't use any of it but i had a bunch of interviews with with uh, with cosplayers there and i was like i'm just gonna walk up to every hot girl i see and and, and talk to them and they were like no yeah definitely oh no yeah like they, they want the exposure they want to show their bodies off they kind of want to be in that like look at me look at me so that they could eventually have prints that they could sell this is a business However, I am going to be with the misses. Now, here, this is going to work twofold. It's going to work for me and against me. I will be able to approach um, a cosplayers. I'll be, uh, yeah, the Dang Lee goes up there. Yeah, I'll be able to approach them and not sound, feel like a creep because I'll have the misses with me. You know, um, my wife, you know, my wife's pretty good looking. So I'll be able to approach them and be like, hey, I'm not just some weirdo mouth breather looking for an interview. So that'll help. On the flip side, I will be with my wife. So uh, I'll be getting dirty looks <laughs> the entire time, like <laughs> you know. So uh, I'll be getting, you know. But she understands; she knows. She knows the business. Um, however, you know. So uh, okay, good. So we got hot cosplayers, other YouTubers, very cool. And uh, there's gonna be a bunch of other YouTubers there too. The whole dark. Do you know? Uh, you know, if, uh, Nicole J- J- What's her name? Jelenic. Jelenic, Jelenic who's uh, another friend uh, of ours, uh, who's an artist. You know if she's gonna be there? 
I don't think she's going to be there. I don't know. I don't think she yeah. likes doing uh, like the big cons. I told her like uh, last year, I was like, yo, could you, you need to go to Con New York Comic Con and mm -hmm. you need to get on Instagram. And she was like, no, no, I don't like the big cons. I kind of don't want to stay away from that or whatever. She might be going. I don't know. For those of you that don't know who Nicole Jelenic is, she is a horror comics artist and writer. And I did an interview with her. Just go back into old Red Cup videos and look at my interview with Nicole Jelenic. She's actually very, she's, Pretty easy on the eyes, guys. So I highly recommend going and searching her out. Uh, what about going to panels? Maybe you can get footage there. I'm talking to uh, Jim Starr, and they were talking about doing a project together. Yeah, so she'll be working with Jim Starlin. That'll be great. That'd be great to be able to talk to her about that because then I could talk to Jim Starlin about that and be like, hey, mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of that'll be like my end there. What about going to panels? Maybe you can get footage there, says Archie. I'm not sure. If I'll be working at panels or photo ops or the shore flow, uh, the show floor yet, uh, I don't do panels, and I'll tell you why. Because I am only there on Thursday, and I don't want to spend five hours waiting on a line just to get into a panel. Yeah, hard to get into, yeah. Hard so to get they into. The asses. So, um, and I don't do photo ops uh, at these cons. I do photo ops at stuff like Terrificon and the smaller conventions because it's um, it's just more fun to be able to walk up to the actor or actress and just talk to them. Uh, my, my favorite panels I've gone into was uh, Grant Morrison. I mean, the place is packed. That guy's like a friggin' rock star. And, uh, of course, the friggin' Burt Ward, Adam West panel we got into. Oh, that was a great <laughs> panel, man. Friggin' the best. The that stories that Adam West was telling. Yeah, that was so really those... I'm glad we got to do that, man. I actually forgot because he passed, so I'm, I'm glad we were able to do that. And we went and yeah. did that. Uh, that was one time we didn't drop the ball unlike when we met jerry robertson uh and neil adams make sure he wears blue oh no i'll be taking <laughs> pictures too so this is um this well then again rob's not on facebook so i'll take pictures and i'll also show them off on the show for rob who doesn't do facebook but i'm going to be putting photos up on instagram and facebook too so i'll make sure i get a picture of um of uh, uh our, our favorite evil mr rogers uh, uh neil adams with his blue shirt uh, make fun of people that wait in line for pops. <laughs> uh, I should, I should do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous. You know what though? I, I, I've been coming to this realization that I, there, there are things that I think are silly and ridiculous that I think are absolutely just a complete waste of time and stupid. And it's like, do I want to sit there and just be like, you're stupid. Like the guy that's on those cooking shows, Baz, that just make yells at people. Your mm -hmm. food sucks. What is he? Uh, uh, not Guy Fieri. Gordon, uh, something. Gordon. Gordon Ramsay, one of those guys. Gordon Ramsay, yeah. Just screams at people. Um, I mean, that would be funny for comedic effect, you know. But they might not think I'm kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm. You know, there's truth in jest. I think it's ridiculous. Those things. I would never do that either. But look, man. Uh, it is what it is. You know, I'd rather just like. Like go to like the shit that I like, and and then I'll be honest as hell though. I'm not just gonna be like, hey, look at the sideshow, because you guys know I do sideshow and hot toys and mezcos, and I'm not just gonna be like, oh my god, look at this, oh, it's a must, you have to have it. Uh, <laughs> you know, do, do that again with your hands. It, it's it's a must have. You have that. Like I'm casting spells at the people I'm talking to them. <laughs> you're, uh, a, you're a gay wizard. Could you ask about one six diorama bases need? Made sold separately from some companies, way overdue, and one six would be sold officially. Yeah, I think so too. The only one six diorama company that does that is companies like um, Asmus did that for the Dora Haberdashery for the uh, um, it was the Dora Haberdashery for uh, what was that Quentin Tarantino movie with uh, Kurt Russell? Um, uh, oh shit! Uh, which one? The Hateful Eight. Hey, Floyd, I didn't like that one. You know, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it's like you're going to do the Dora Haberdashery and you're not going to do like, let's say, the the tomb in Lord of the Rings. Like your Asmus is all about Lord of the Rings. They should have did like their first diorama should have been like, you know what these companies do. They try to sell. It's the same thing that Mezco did with their Frankenstein diorama. The thing was fantastic. Nobody bought it. Everybody didn't, you know, got got dejected with Mezco when they weren't doing the other Universal monsters. So everybody ignored that Frankenstein doorway, and it was awesome. It was an awesome, awesome piece. It was huge. It was heavy. You could have clocked someone in the head with it and killed them. It was heavy polystone. Did you get the uh, black and white one? Yeah, I had the black and white uh, Frankenstein, and I had the the door. 
But when I was like, I'm going to yeah. give them another year to see if they come out with a Bella Lugosi or, or any of the other Universal Monsters, they didn't, and I sold it. And this was the last time I went and asked them a question. I was like, you know, I asked Pierre this, who doesn't actually work with Mezco anymore. And I was like, yo, Pierre, I says, uh, where's the rest of the Universal Monsters? Oh, they don't really sell very well, so you really can't expect us to keep going. And it's like, yo, you guys are releasing other things that are like off the beaten path, and everything is selling out now. This was when, like, your company was first starting. You need to kind of put a little bit of extra oomph in this. And you're like, oh, you can't expect us to go to our higher-ups and say, we need to continue the line so that this might sell. So no one bought the Frankenstein dioramas. Now they're like $500 on the aftermarket, and they're highly, highly sought after. They were giving these away. When Dude, you got I saw them for, for $60 on uh, Amazon. No, not Frankenstein. The Frankenstein doorway diorama. Oh, okay. The doorway diorama was 150 when they released it, or 175. No one bought it. And then they were giving it away in like those mystery boxes. People were getting them and complaining. Like, I don't want this. This is stupid. And now it's like the most one of the highest sought after Mezco things is this this polystone diorama. Because now everybody that actually wanted one got it. And everyone now that wants one can't get it. And uh, it's very, very expensive, and it's very, very nice. I reviewed it in one of my first Red Cup videos. It was like, I want to see my second Red Cup video uh, when, like, I sucked and, like, the lighting was shitty. So if you guys just want to take a look at what it even looked like, go and watch that. Uh, <clears throat> Rob, just a fan, is asking Baz a question, but Baz has himself on mute right now. So when he comes back, Rob, here, I'll put this on the screen for him to see when he comes back. Uh, so yeah, one six diorama bases. So com my point is that company should lead off with something that's, um, they got to lead off with a, you got to, you got to come out swinging. You got to come out with a home run. Like Asmus is known for doing Lord of the Rings figures. So they should have did like the, the, the tomb from the fellowship in the first movie, right? Where they were all kind of fighting back to back in the, the dwarven cave. Like that would have been awesome. Or like the big door, Elven doorway, where they cast a spell, and he's like Bella, and it opens, and it means friendship and Elven or some bullshit. You got to lead off with a, 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 something that's really, really essential to a collection, especially something you're you're known for. All right, Baz, you have a question directed at Baz. Oh, the, yeah, the turtles are they worth it? I I like them. I I, I think they're they're worth it. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. I never see. I've never seen those NECA turtles in person. They, they look pretty friggin' dope. The uh, the movie uh, versions, right? Have you seen them? Yeah, no, they look right. great. I've seen them in person. Yeah, they they're nice. I guess they it's all up to issues, but the, the movies they weren't flipping around either. So for movie characters, they're good. I guess it's up to personal taste. Uh, the articulation on these are, are are pretty good. I mean, uh, maybe it's, the only problem here would be just like the the single. Uh, the single joint over here in the bicep, you know, that's it. It's a little limited, but other than that, everything else is, uh, is fine. I mean, there's no, it, there's no waste. There's, you shouldn't have a waist twist on a turtle, right? No. Yeah. So, but the Batman does, the Batman has a twist at the waist and has pretty decent articulation. Is it, is it like the sculpts are good? No, oh, the sculpts are great. Yeah. They look like they, they're coming straight out of the cartoon. Yeah. So I guess if you're a fan yeah. of that cartoon, that's the way to go. Uh, someone new that I've never seen before. Judge Jack says hello, Red Cup review, and hello everybody. So hello, What's Red up? Cup it looks like he's a YouTuber of some kind. It looks like he's got some, yeah, JJ. Okay, he's got the gauntlet. He's got some Wolverine claws. He's got his own icon. This guy don't fuck around. Dude, What's get me, on, get me back at him too. Like I'm taking up the whole screen. Oh yeah, my bad. There you go. There we go. My head was too big there. It scared me. <laughs> It was scary, Am everyone. Amazon. Lay yes, it far. It does, a, uh, it does have a cloth cape, Rob. Uh... <laughs> oh, here's something that I have to let everybody know. Two weeks ago, we... Yeah, they did Shredder. Hold on. Sorry. They did them all. They did Shredder. They did uh, Alfred. They did friggin' uh, what you call it? Uh, Ra's al Ghul from the ad animated turtle uh, movie. Yeah, where... Right now. All in two packs, right? You get, are you getting all the two packs or just the you just get one? Yeah, no, I ordered them all. They, they're coming in, in, in installments, though. The first two were, were uh, the Batman and the, the Robin uh, two packs. Nice, nice. The Robin comes with Michelangelo, and Batman comes with uh, Leonardo. Nice, yes, and yeah. they, they did do Shredder. Shredder comes with uh, with uh, Ra's al Ghul, I believe. Yeah, I can't wait for that. 
Noble Young is in every stream you view, Mr. Lee. This is the first time I'm seeing him. What's up, dude? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. At least this is the first time I think I'm seeing him. Thanks, okay, Danny. Uh, you're Bob. awesome, too. Danny, you're an awesome friend. Guys, this is awesome. Thank uh, you. Rob Swallow says, Rob, how come you're selling your Asmus? You're not getting Gandalf? Yes, I am getting Gandalf. Uh, I have to downsize my collection. That's where I'm at. I have to downsize quite a bit. I'm getting rid of my Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise. I'm starting with him. I've already gotten rid of uh, puberty. Uh, Peter Brady says, I already got rid of uh, my Samwise. Uh, I sold him off, and I'm selling off the rest of my Lord of the Rings figures with the exception of Frodo because my wife actually suggested hold on to Frodo because you're going to want Frodo to have with Gandalf, and I am doing that Gandalf. Uh, I've always played a wizard in Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm a, like just a fan of wizards in general, and uh, uh, Gandalf is awesome, so I'm going to just have him represent my whole Lord of the Rings thing, so him and Frodo will encompass lord of the rings as, as far as i'm concerned because space guys i have a big 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 basement but i share it with kids and i don't want to just have shit all over the place so i try to squeeze the coal until it turns into a diamond and if that means having the rest of the lord of the rings figures suffer and they do look awesome when they're all together like posed like i had them all posed up like uh ready to like uh, take on the uh the orcs and shit in the urukai but um Look, man, it is what it is. And that Gandalf figure is over three hundred dollars. So I got to come up with the cash somehow. Kevin's Matrix says, "Hey, Baz, if I end up using a CPAP, CPAP mask, you could have permission to bane it out, and you'll have my permission to die." <laughs> so <That's> awesome. <laughs> um, what is? Uh, oh, Titans, dude, Titans, man. Yes. Okay. So now we can get on with like we've already done all that other shit. So now we will talk about hey, Jez. Rob, loving the beard. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, oh, for those of you that do um, Twitter, Jez is very big on Twitter. Jez is all over Comicsgate. She's all, she's very vocal, and she shares a lot of cool stuff. So if you want to follow uh, somebody that actually shares some cool shit, check out uh, her, her handle on, um, on, on uh, uh, Twitter. Okay. Uh, uh, I got into it with one six kit last week. Worst customer service ever. The guy was cursing and everything. <gasps> he was cursing. Oh my God. Actually, that's not good for customer service at all. I've had uh, nothing but good interactions with the one six kit guy. Uh, I, but I've, I've bought very sparingly things with him over the last five years. I buy like one thing every like two years from him. Uh, so, uh, shit, if he, if he, you know, did some nasty stuff and was very nasty, then it's not cool, man. You don't mess with the Red Cup family. You get doing you, the show. You get the horns. Doing the show. There you go. Get there out. Jez. Get out. At Jezebel underscore M. And you follow her for comic stuff and movie stuff and stuff like that. She's good. Good stuff, guys. So we'll leave that up for a minute. Uh, never buy from them before. Uh, beware if you have issues. Yeah. All right. Well, hope you know. Look, man. I hope it all works out for you. Um. Let's see. Somebody else just said something. Yes, it was Baz. It was Baz. And now we can get on with talking about news of the week. Now that we're an hour into the show, holy shit. Okay. Titans. What do you think so far? I've only seen the first episode, so please don't don't kill episode two for me. No. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right, he's putting himself on mute, and I'm putting myself. Uh, again, that's Jez on Twitter. Follow her. Okay. Um, Titan episode one came out. It was very fun, a lot of awesome. It seems like a completely different show now. It seems like Titans season two is going the same way that Arrow season two went, where it went from being a really serious and dark show to a more superhero-esque type show. And I'm all for that because I love the second season of Arrow. And it, uh, I, I hate when mom comes into the basement. Oh, Ruins, mom uh, Mama Bane. Uh Okay, uh, I thought season uh, two, episode one was kind of, they rushed it. I thought they rushed um, the battle with Trigon. Yeah, it seemed like that last, this episode should have been the last episode of last season. That was kind of weird. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. 
I thought they were going to make it such, like a real big epic battle if they were going to hold it off for like till season two, the right. final episode, because they left season one on a cliffhanger. Right. And it kind of like, it felt like they kind of rushed the whole Trigon thing. They rushed it to a conclusion so they could get the Deathstroke and like set up everything for the new season, which looks great. I mean, you have Deathstroke. This last episode of uh, episode episode two had Doctor Light. He's going to be a major villain now, also on the show. It was it was a good episode, but I felt it was kind of rushed. Uh, the way Raven dispatched uh, spoilers felt almost like you know, like how uh, when Thor fought fought the Destroyer in, in Thor one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so I was a little disappointed. I do like who's playing uh, Deathstroke because that actor is very intimidating when he plays a bad guy. Yeah, he's so. cool, man. Uh, uh, Cy Ramos is cool as hell. Uh, I liked it. I wasn't over the moon for it, but I, I did like it as I just liked the show in general. I think the costumes look great. Um, I liked – what do you think of Batman? Uh, I liked him, man. I, his accent was interesting. It seemed like he was going for like an East Coast kind of almost Boston type accent. What do you think? Um, I'll tell you what I thought of the character and what I'm hearing other people say about his portrayal of Batman. I'm hearing a lot of hate that they did not uh -huh. like it. Uh, he said like, oh, he's too old. He's too old. And it's like, oh my God. Hearing it's, it's a version. Old. I'm hearing it's just Sir John Mormont wearing a suit. Uh, he's too British. It's too like you're European or whatever it is, and terrible, terrible cat. I liked it. To me, it reminded me of a more serious Adam West. Like if Adam West yeah. was dead serious, I thought he walked like Adam West. The blue suit that he was wearing was very something that, like with the with the um the the the, the kerchief in, in the pocket. He yeah. had a very debonair Adam Westy Bruce Wayne thing going on. He's very high cultured, sophisticated. Yes, uh, good way to uh, put it. And um, the, the accent was interesting. It was very East Coast. Um, it's weird coming out of his mouth because, like, he's he, in on, in Game of Thrones. He just he speaks regularly. He's British, right, or Scottish? Yeah, European, whatever. Uh, I do like his role on the show. It seems like he's just playing Bruce Wayne, and he's going to mentor uh, Dick Grayson. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of good character development, uh, and it's going to be cool to see uh, Bruce and Dick interact. Uh, on that level, so I find it interesting, and, and we've seen older versions of Batman, you know. Yeah, Come no, on, Kingdom cool. Come, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, he had a very Kingdom yeah. Come esque thing going on too, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the older face, the kind of a little bit of a comb over kind of, uh -huh. you know. Um, I don't know. I liked it, uh, but again, again, I like just seeing different. If you're gonna get like different things, I want to see different things. I think it's cool. Uh, they didn't show Superboy yet. At least I don't think so. I'm only one episode in. No. Um, and uh, I don't have the DC streaming service. Baza does. I even went... looks like she aged like two years in between the seasons. That's the that's the thing when you're a teenager, like a young teenager in Hollywood. Yeah. Like uh, six months can go by and your voice can change. You can grow mm -hmm. like three, four inches. You know, you remember what it was like when you hit puberty? You turn into a monster overnight, practically. Yeah. You know? Uh, I did, however, join up for the uh, the Disney streaming service. I got uh, – I bought – into the Disney streaming service and it came out because there was a promotion going on last weekend. And how dare you? Um, uh, I bought, it was three years. It was buy two years, get one free. It came out to $4 a month. So I was like $4 a month for three years. I am all in. I paid for it upfront. So I don't got to worry about a recurring bill. It was $140 for three years. That's nothing. Jesus Christ. Nothing. So I'm yeah. all in on that. And that's For three years. Great. By the end of those three yeah. years, you're probably going to be like, okay, I've had enough. And, uh, exactly. You know, and it's four dollars a month, dude. I'm, and I already paid for it in full upfront, so I don't even got it. It's just I'm going to have it now for three years. Uh, that's better I'm than kind of just interested in that. That uh, what you call vision and uh, what you call it. Uh, Scarlet Vision. What's her name? Scarlet. Yeah, that kind of show. I might be interested a little bit. Otherwise, you know, whatever. Oh, stop. Like, you're not interested in The Mandalorian. Would you stop? Yeah, The Mandalorian. Yeah, I guess. Uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series. Just stop. 
Yeah, no, but I, I'm not. You know, I'm not gonna go crazy over this stuff. This stuff drives me crazy so much. Like it's so, so much freaking disappointment and heartache that involved in it nowadays that I don't have so much enthusiasm towards it because I get so fucking angry at some of this shit. But um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, imagine it, if Amelia from Game of Thrones played Catwoman, aka Mother of Dragons, right? Catwoman with Teen Titans Batman actor. <laughs> Oh, that would be good. Then he would finally be out he of the friend zone. Finally, <laughs> get out of the fucking friend zone. Perfect. <laughs> That's it. Thank There'd be memes all over the internet that John Mormont finally got his. Um, or or he puts her in the fucking friend zone and he gets revenge. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, bitch. You know what? I don't even want it now. Later. Jezebel says the makeup <laughs> artist sucks. On what show, Jez? What show? Uh, does Titan. She hates uh, the the way everyone's hair is done and shit. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she. You know, I, I'm not gonna say I, I can't criticize Jez for that because she is, uh, from what I hear, um, well versed in like uh, costume design and things like that. Of that nature. So if anyone's gonna know, I mean, from a, per, a semi-professional eye, she would. Uh, I don't give a shit. You put fucking, uh, you make Robin's costume look awesome. That's all you got to do. <laughs> just make Robin look cool. He's never looked <laughs> cooler. I'm down. I think Donna Troy looks great in that outfit with the stars and shit. So I'm cool with that. How do you like Jason Todd? I know you're not a big Jason Todd fan, but I think he's pretty, uh, I like the dynamic. Yeah, he's cool. The yeah. dynamic is cool. Yeah. Uh, they need to get Robin proper. Uh, Dick Grayson out of that outfit and into the Nightwing outfit because having two Robins run around with the same outfit is kind of stupid. Um, it worked a little bit in the first season, uh, but uh, you know whatever. He's he's an asshole and that's what Jason yeah. is. He plays a good asshole. It's like okay, he fits the role. It's good. Actor's fine. Uh, these were, they're writing him fine. He's like a little douche, you know. I don't understand that either. I don't understand the love for this character. He's like then he's the new Deadpool. And the new Harley Quinn. It's like now everyone's into Jason Todd all of a sudden. What, uh, what about Donna Troy? How do you like the, that actress? I think she's good. I like it. I like her. I, I like the the. I just I don't know. I like it. I think she's pretty. She has a great looking outfit. Yeah, she's like a tough girl. Like you know, she's like almost like a tomboy type. Yeah, I like it. But she also yeah. has soft features. She's not like you know strong jaw woman. Right. Yeah. She's like tomboy, but like you want to kiss her. You know. Right. Uh, well, it, it's perfect characterization because uh, she's the... I oh, know, right? All these interruptions. Mom! Mom's bothering <laughs> you now? Mom! Uh, pick up the phone! Well, uh, Dick Dick, and her are like kind of like the mother, father, uh, brother, sister of the team of the Titans. Right. So from the female uh, perspective, she's uh, the, the leader Who with, is along with Dick. No, it's cool. Like the two older... like. The two older, uh, like late mid to late twenty characters watching over the the real teens, I guess. No, yeah. uh, Corey, who's Corey? Corey is Coriander. Uh, it's uh, Starfire. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't look. I'm still not on board with her. I'm not feeling her. Yeah, yeah I'm not feeling that her. whole that whole freaking hooker look from last. They got to get rid of the hooker season, look, but... and we got to straighten her hair out. That that those yeah. curls got to go. It just she looks like she has spaghetti hanging off of her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like Fazili's hanging off like she stuck her head in a pot of Fazili's and came up and was like, oh, Look at your head. You make me want to go boil a pot of water. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm waiting for someone to just, just stick a fork in her hair and just twirl it around. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But, uh, you know, whatever. I don't know. I like it. I want to see the next episode tonight. I'm probably going to um, watch that tonight and maybe the new Bill Burr stand up. Oh, for those oh, of you that I saw it. I saw it. That was good. Oh, it was great. All right. So for those, I'm going to see the Bill Burr stand up tonight. But for those of you that didn't see the Dave Chappelle stand up on Netflix, I highly, highly recommend this. My favorite comedian of all time is George Carlin. So that'll put you in like an idea of like what I find funny. And this is like a new version, like a new age Carlin level stand up. And I'm that, I'm sticking by it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, fine. I'm glad you know comedians are finally like you know stepping up to the whole PC uh, culture and telling them to go fuck off. You're killing That's comedy. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Hell's yeah. Uh, comics get get a pass. Period. No matter what, they're comics. Uh, they're making Gordon Black in the Twilight Batman movie. Your thoughts? Uh, are you sure? Is that a definite? I didn't hear that. 
I didn't hear that. What I'll tell you what I did hear though. Uh, I didn't hear that in particular, and it depends on who the actor is, I guess. You know, I don't know. Is Idris Elba playing him? That'd be great. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll watch a movie where he's playing everybody. Um, I heard another rumor, which I'm sure has no validity at all, but that they're looking at uh, Denzel to play Magneto. Stupid! The, Magneto's a, a Jew from the that lived through the Holocaust. Right now, the, right. Yes, he, yes. Now, I'm of two minds about this, okay? I'm of two minds, you could say. You could say he's of two minds about this topic. Uh, I like it, and I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it for the obvious reasons. Those the reasons that everyone has. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Why are we just arbitrarily making characters look different for the sake of diversity? Not interested in that. However, that being said... Uh, you know, uh, Professor X and Magneto were both modeled after Malcolm X. No, I think that was retcon, dude. That was not, no, I don't think that was true, man. I think later on, it just, it, it fit the bill. Are you uh, sure? It looked like that. Yeah, yeah, that think, go online and watch a YouTube video. A lot of people say back. that shit. No, I don't think that's true, man. I think now later on, they they, they, they made the characters, characters like that. They wrote them like that later on after the fact, but I don't, I don't think the original idea of them was that was uh, was that was uh, uh, what's his name Malcolm X and uh, Martin Luther King. No, right. I don't think that's true. Even if it isn't, mm -hmm. hear me out for a second. Okay, you can't have Magneto in the new MCU be a Jew that grew up in the Holocaust because he'd be too old. Me too old. Now, mutants don't have to age at the same rate that other ones do. Magneto cool. has always looked the same, but they don't have time. They're not going to develop the siege perilous and talk about how he went through that time warp and it kept him young and all that bullshit. And he was reborn from a baby. That whole they can't do that. They got to just change it for the sake of keeping things. Like Frank Castle is no longer a Vietnam vet. He's a veteran of. Uh, the Gulf War now, but dude, I go. You know, like what was special about the MCU is what is that they tried to stay as close as possible to the comics, right? And yeah. now they're now they're now they're going away from that. Um, so, and I'll, I'll say this: know, if yeah. if they do 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 they do do um, if they if want they do -do. to uh, update the Magneto character and make him. Um, like, let's say, okay, a modern version of Magneto wouldn't necessarily be a Holocaust survivor, but maybe he was around, uh, f like, during the 80s in, like, New York when shit was fucked up back then, or the 70s, perhaps. But then again, he might still be too old, you know? Uh, if they want to go that route with it, um, it's, it's kind of like a modern, you know, a little bit more modern, I guess. And I think Denzel's cool as, as shit. Uh, I think that Denzel is, um, he's just a cool actor. I could see him commanding people. I could see, I see Denzel as like a leader of men. I could see him being like, you know, doing that whole Plymouth Rock landed on us bullshit and having other, like mutants follow him. So I could see that. I don't know if I'm for it. I'd have to see it. I do want him to be awesome. And I don't think Denzel's going to really look that great with the old school Magneto helmet and the, yeah, I don't think it looks, yeah, it'll look good. Um, no, I am definitely not for it. Make new characters. Use the existing characters and pump them up. Uh, Stop with this shit, man. Rob, like, uh, look, uh, yeah. No, uh, I want you to talk. I want you to talk because I'm also looking at the, uh, the, 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 the chat going on over here. So finish your thought. Like I said, it's a visual medium. Comics is a visual medium. Uh, we get, we get used to the way the, the way these characters look are, are very integral to to. To why we like them, also, you know, like we get used, like like Luke Skywalker. I mean, Luke Skywalker has to have blonde hair and be a little sh white boy, farm boy type looking person. Like if you were to make him look like me, he's not Luke Skywalker. I wouldn't want that, right? You know, right. so uh, it's just they're they're like Peter Parker. You need Peter Parker to be like you know a, a kid with brown hair or whatever, white kid, whatever the fuck. That's right. the character. That's what we, we get used to. Spawn. Spawn is Al Simmons, man. Right? They tried to make Spawn. Um, uh, they changed changed him to a white dude, and it failed. Who the hell wants a non-Al Simmons Spawn? 
Yeah, exactly. You know? I'm, 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 I'm so, over that too. That's another, you know, that's why my brain is wrestling with this whole thing. Rob Just a fan says Tom Hardy so far played Picard's clone, Bane, uh, Mad Max, Eddie Brock, the guy's all over. Yes, and he should also play Doctor Doom. But I also heard another rumor that they're looking at Vigo Mortsen to play Doctor Doom, perhaps. And that's no, not a bad place either. That's perfect. That's you know he's that's, European. That's, you don't get any better than that. Like that's pretty damn good. So the I guy who played Hannibal. Good, you know. Yeah. Uh, Rob, what do you think of that Venom figure? Are you getting it? What that. The, the new Hot Toys Venom figure, I'm guessing you're saying? Uh, no. If it's the Hot Toys version, that like that statue-esque looking thing, not at all. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy a, a one-sixth Venom figure either. I got to reserve my one-sixth stuff for like either characters in movies that were super mean something to me growing up nostalgia-wise or that are like just super iconic. Like I, I sold my Spider-Man Hot Toy. Because I was like, yeah, the material of the suit's going to deteriorate over time. And even though it looked better than half of the shit I already own, I got rid of it. Because I was like, whatever. Like, I just, I got to, I, 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 my, my collection has a lot of turnaround. So I do a lot of, of cycling figures in and out. So it's always staying fresh. Uh, they need Vigo Morganson to play Magneto, says Danny Lee. That wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> yeah. Also, Chris Faulkner, I'm going to put him up real quick because we haven't seen him in a while, and it is good to see you. And, yes, I am doing all right. Thank you for asking. I'm doing a little bit better, although uh, I have another uh, family member that's not – that's on, you know, that's kind of on rocky rocky ground right now, and I'll talk about that another time. I want to keep it positive for right now. Mm. Uh, when the hell are they going to release live-action Supergirl movie with her against Brainiac or Dark Side? Yeah, hold your breath. <laughs> don't, don't bank on it. If the, if the higher-ups at Warner Brothers just don't bang on it. Are gonna, well, I heard they want to prior, prioritize Supergirl over Superman in the movie uh, division. So Yeah, whatever. They should just, well, why don't we just go up and, and they should just do Huntress instead of Batman, too. And then they should just do... Uh, They're Black doing Huntress and uh, Birds of, of Prey. But it looks they, like shit. They should, they should just, like, I don't know, do the, do the, a, uh, the Avengers A-team, the A-girl, the girl Avengers, do them, too. And um, what else could we do? We can turn uh, we can turn every character female, too. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, uh, in the same, uh, I'd be pissed if they made Blade white. Yeah, word. I don't want to see white blade. No, exactly. Stupid, stupid, stupid. We want to see these characters the way we, we, they they were originally uh, depicted. Yeah, when we when we fell in love with them, you know, it's 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 not a racist a racial thing. It's just uh, that's what the character looks like. That's what we liked, you know. Yeah. That's uh, whatever. All right, so uh, yo, they uh, released the the cast for uh, the next Suicide Squad movie with uh, James Gunn at the yes. director's film. And I don't know anybody except for two people. <laughs> <on the whole. laughs> I'm sure I know everyone that's in this damn movie. I just right, I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share the the cast. Do it, do it. Screen share the cast. While you're doing that, uh, Rob just a fan says bummer about me downsizing, and it's no, it's not downsizing. It's just squeezing. So I have forty-two hot toys and six scale figures. I want to turn that into like thirty-five, because I have Two Face coming, I have uh, Crate Luke coming, I have uh, uh, Superman from Justice League coming. So it's all about squeezing. And then it inflates again, and then we squeeze it back down again. So you could say it's like a something that just kind of does this. It's like you inhale, and the collection gets bigger, and then you got to exhale and let that shit kind of. That's how that works. All right, Baz has got the screen share. We're adding to the stream. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see, David. David Dust Malchian. That's the guy who played. Uh, which he was in uh, Ant Man. He was the he was the one who kept going. Oh, Baba Yaga! He's okay, the tech, cool. the tech guy. Yeah. yeah, I could see him in uh in in uh, like a Suicide Squad type movie. That's cool. So he's playing some sort of character. I think his name is Polka Dot Man or some shit. Some cheesy. Oh, you know, that's awesome! D list character. So you know he's gonna die. I love Polka Dot Man. He's good. <laughs> uh, John Cena. I don't know who he's playing. But he, maybe yeah, John Cena's playing like uh he's you know doing his like. Mil Military, military guy, character, yeah, whatever. No, he's not military guy. He's actual like vi like a villain, but you know that's cool. Cena's all right. He's pretty cool. Yeah, I like Cena. He's his acting has gotten better. 
Uh, Jai Courtney, so he's back as uh, Boomerang. That's awesome. Thumbs up. That's great. He, uh, you know, a lot of haters actually enjoyed him in that movie. You know, so a lot of people that didn't like him actually said he was really good. I never had a problem with him. I liked him and as Captain I, Boomerang. He's like one of the only things I liked about that movie. <laughs> exactly, he was <laughs> great. In that movie. You know. Okay, so Joaquin Cosio, no clue. All right. Okay, so now we got Nathan Fillion. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, last I heard, there was a rumor going around that he might be playing Green Lantern in the movie, and I hope so. I mean, he he's been doing the uh, the what you call it, the voice acting for in the uh, animated movies, right? For Green Lantern. So that would be cool. cool. Thumbs up. Uh, like it. Uh, uh, Joel Kinnaman, first movie, he played uh, the military guy. I forgot his name. Um, oh, he sucked. You don't like him? He's a robot. No. Nah. Yeah, whatever. I didn't see okay. that shit either, which I should because Michael Keaton's in it. <laughs> okay, so Mailing NG. Nig. Mailing Nig. Okay. I don't know how to say that. NG uh, is Ing. I have a guy at my job Ing? with an, last name, uh, uh, an Asian guy with the last name Ing. It's, it's NG is Ing. Mailing Ing. Okay. Then Flula Borg. I mean, who doesn't love Flula Borg? This, uh, I, I feel, and this is no disrespect to the actors, but I feel like James Gunn made some of these names up. And he just <laughs> threw this shit up there. Like, I, you know what this tells me is that he's just going to kill a bunch of people in this movie, too. Yeah. Like half his cast is going to go. Which Short is Gun great. Cool. His brother's cool. I like him in uh, Guardians. Oh, he's great. He's hysterical. Uh, okay, so Sean Gunn. Uh, Juan Diego Boto. Nope. No clue. No clue. He's going to die, too. Storm Reed. Sounds like a weatherman, a local weatherman. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck he is. But he... <laughs> if the acting doesn't you know, work out for him, he should go into weather. Pete Davidson, the unfunny comedian from SNL. Okay. The guy who... The guy who was dating, uh, what's that singer's name? Uh, oh, is he the looking guy with the sullen yeah. eyes? Like, Yeah, that guy. Very oh, unfunny God. looking. Ariana Grande. Yeah, Ariana Grande, yeah. Ariana Grande. I must break her. Taika Watiti, who uh, directed the last Thor movie. So he's like still, he's still uh, acting hardcore, huh? Nice. Maybe he'll be like a mocap guy or something. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. He's, I, I thought he was just going to go into directing full time, but he's he's like both. That's cool. Uh, okay, so uh, Alice Braga, no clue. Nope. Stevie A. G. Uh, Tanashi Kajesi, no fucking clue. Sounds diverse. <laughs> Keep uh, going. <laughs> Daniela Melchior, that's a cool name. Maybe he just sat at his at his desk and just typed it like this, like a bunch of names real fast. Like he's just like a just gonna just type and just whatever comes up that's the actor that's in the movie. <laughs> so we got Peter Peter Capaldi, who was the the last Doctor Who before they turned it uh, turned her him into a chick. Okay, he was pretty good. He was pretty good, but the, the show sucked. Uh, Julio Ru Ruiz, don't know him. Jennifer Holland is that a singer? No, sounds familiar. Okay, Viola Davis is back as uh, Amanda Waller. Yes, uh, good. Your boy Idris Elba. Idris Elba playing hopefully everyone else in the movie. <laughs> playing uh, Bronze Tiger. See, oh really? Were, yeah, originally he was. They, they were saying he was going to be Deadshot, but no, he's going to be Bronze Tiger. Nice, I like it. Which is awesome. He's like one of the the premier martial artists in the DCU. Uh, Mark and actually Michael J. Uh, White plays him on the Arrow show. Yes, okay. Margot Ro Robbie's back as uh, our favorite uh, clown princess with the tight ass, uh, Harley Quinn. <laughs> uh, hopefully, she she they ha they have a better uh, she has a better wardrobe than in her solo movie. That other fucking travesty coming out in a couple of months. They released and, in February. You should tell you everything you need to know about the fucking emancipation of that. Whatever it is they're doing, and uh, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Michael nice. Rooker. Rooker, nice, cool. Yes, I don't know who he's playing, but uh, he's one of my favorite actors now. I like it. There's a lot of people here. Let's see, that's four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24 different characters. Wow, kill off a whole bunch of them. Yeah, 
that's cool. Hey, listen, man, whatever. I'm down. I think it's cool. I think it's it, whatever. He's playing Yondu. <laughs> judge. The judge. <laughs> the judge says. You think he's going to go for a, a cool hip soundtrack just like the uh, Guardians movies? Sure. I mean, the last one tried to be Guardians, so it's like, we tried to be Guardians. So now we're really going to get the guy that just does Guardians to come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Great. Hey, man. I'm down. But look, it'll have a good fucking soundtrack. You know, at least it'll have a good soundtrack. But um, I don't know. I guess I, I, tr I trust in I trust in the director. I like his stuff, so it is what it is. Um, well, we, yeah, chocolate pretzel. Yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes, man. Yeah, that, that's how I. That's how I'll always know him. <laughs> as, yeah, yeah. as uh, what's his face? Uh, Brand Brandy Svenning's father, Mister Svenning, from uh, uh, Morats. Um, anything else going on oh, this week, man, guys? He was licking, licking his fingers, man. Okay, uh, and let me see. What the hell are they doing? Come on, guys. Uh, Star we Wars have, we have rumors. You guys in here. Let's see. Come on. Give, give us some stuff before we sign off. All right, real quick. I want to talk. Uh, let's talk some Star Wars. But before that, I want to just talk about the three of the movies I saw uh, last weekend. Uh, like I, I went. I saw Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I saw three different movies that I, I had. Uh, just, you know, didn't go to the movies to see last summer. Uh, Thursday was um, Godzilla. King of Monsters, I thought it was freaking excellent. It was fun. It had every, all the monsters from like you know the Sunday afternoon uh, shows we used to watch as a kid, the Godzilla shows. You know, you had Rodan, you had Ghidorah, you had Mothra. Uh, Godzilla was on our, you know, you were rooting for Godzilla. He was working. He was you know fighting for the humans. It was a dead up legit Godzilla movie. Finally, you know, done right, uh, and the villain was really cool. Then the next night, I saw uh, friggin' holy shit, John Wick three, man! What a fucking movie, man! It just blew, the action scenes are just friggin' outrageous, nonstop action, great movie, great cliffhanger at the end. I'm so psyched up to see the the, the, the fourth one. I'm gonna be there opening night, so uh, I liked it better than the second one. And then Alita, Alita was great, another friggin' amazing action movie. So all the all those movies, and a lot of them didn't do well at the box office. Besides John Wick three. The other two did, didn't do well, so uh, which makes me a little, you know, sad because I would like to see sequels from Godzilla and Alita. So, well, Godzilla's next movie is going to wind up being with uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. Well, supposedly they want to make it, but uh, it didn't do well at the box office. So I don't know if they're going to scrap that. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen, if it's not Disney or Marvel, that's the thing. You know? Oh, speaking of which, uh, I, I wrote in the in the thing tonight that we were talking about Joker and we didn't mention it once. So here you go. So for the sake of me not sounding like a lying piece of shit, uh, a lot of people are coming out now with the negative reviews of Joker, and it seems like the social justice crowd is getting their licks in now. Mm -hmm. uh, don't trust it too much, guys. A lot of these – look, the movie might not be your taste, but – you know, it's an uh, one lady was like, it's an utterly disgusting movie, and it'll only in you know toxic masculinity, and it'll incite you know white males to go and start killing people again. Whatever, man. Crazy assholes are just gonna crazy asshole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're putting their own politics onto this movie, and it's not meant to be like that. Yeah, because they got to politicize everything because they feel as though they need to have some kind of self-importance in the world or some bullshit. Uh, and he, here they are with 100,000 YouTube followers or uh, uh, whatever, Twitter followers, and I'm here like, you know, I mean, I'm, I would rather, you know what? I would rather be here with you guys, so it doesn't fucking matter. Well, the big controversy was that, like, uh, it's getting reviews that would, that are, are like, decent reviews that would be uh, fresh for marvel movies but they're actually rotten for the joker movie yeah i saw that they gave one guy yeah. gave it a three star three out of five and they rated it rotten and then the marvel movies that were three out of fives were fresh exactly yeah so that's the big controversy there so that's kind of fucked up yeah well but, uh, that's why i always have uh, both eyes on the mouse <laughs> i had heard that there was there was no validity validity to that though because that it happened to another movie as well, like a non-Marvel movie where like it was rated uh, three and got like a, a, a not um, not fresh review. 
but even mm. though the review was was fresh, uh, you know, whatever. You know, you know what? I'm gonna go see the movie anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You know, I want to see. I want to see Taxi Driver and the King of Comedy with with fa- with face paint. Um. Oh, I'm there, man. October sixth, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, people were complaining about the horrors and the horror movie. It too. Yeah, you know what? Fuck these people. I don't even know why we give them any validity by even talking about them. It's like you run a pop culture show, and then you got to talk about this shit, and it's like we got to lend credence to something that was just doesn't deserve it. Yeah, it's definitely becoming less fun because there's so much, you know, activism involved now and politics involved and and, and what used to be escapism. Now it's like, you know, you, you know escape from or escapism is becoming <laughs> becoming a, you know, yeah. a battleground. But kept uh, saying that, uh, that he didn't like uh, Aladdin. I didn't think it sucked. I I enjoyed it, but I also went to see it with a 5-year-old. And a seven-year-old, so oh, I was yeah. seeing it through their eyes, and my son and my daughter loved it. So I was like, "Yay, this is fun too!" Like, I don't know, man. I guess it's it, it, it. Also, your enjoyment of a movie also kind of needs to be in the moment, or you need to kind of be in the mindset, or surrounded by like-minded individuals. You can go and watch something and think it sucks because maybe it's not for you. But if you were like surrounded by kids and with your nieces and nephews, or, or if you had kids, or whatever, your grandkids, I don't know how old half you fucks are, and just having fun with it, you know, and the kids are singing, like, yeah, in front of the front line, and Sky, and, and all that, and one day I'll be king, or Sultan, or whatever the hell he says, and then the kids are singing it, and then you start singing it, and that's it, you know what I'm saying, it kind of like, it's it's infectious. That happiness is infectious. Um, and I, I hate musicals personally, too. Oh, I watched Rocket Man. Uh, the other night, and uh, no, Baz, I can't screen share that. I watched Rocket Man the other night, and uh, I didn't like it. I thought Rocket Man was kind of whack. I thought that like the acting scenes were good, but I don't like musicals. I didn't know it was a musical, and it was nowhere even close to the movie uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was. Bohemian Rhapsody was excellent, and Rocket Man was like, okay, that was good with a lot of singing. Like they just break out into singing and dancing, like mm-hmm. like literally dancing and shit, like dance numbers. And it's like, what the fuck am I watching? Uh, you know. So whatever, it is what it is. Um, okay. I'm a bigger I'm a bigger Queen fan than Elton John, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I like Elton John too. I am a big bigger Queen fan though too. Uh, this is what I wanted to say about the the Joker. Was it the Joker movie? Shit, I had something to say about it, and I freaking forgot. How terrible. Oh, okay, so two weeks ago, during Red Cup Lives two weeks ago, we did a watch-along, right, with the Joker trailer. And I muted it, and Baz was like, we can't get volume on this. And I was like, nope, we're going to get copyright problems if we don't mute this. So we watched the Joker trailer together, and we commented on it, right? And then mm. I, got a, I, got, I got a warning letter from YouTube. Hmm. YouTube struck me down with great ver- furious anger and vengeance saying that you are utilizing copyrighted material and mm-hmm. uh, Warner Brothers uh, filed a copyright against Red Cup Review. So Shit. it was demonetized and it doesn't have any more views than it normally would. Like sometimes like it grows in views as the week goes on. It capped yeah. out at 135 views for the week and that was it. So they buried the video. Because we did. How do people do uh, reaction videos then? I have no idea. I I don't know. I don't know how that works. I got to find a YouTuber that does reaction videos and I have to ask him. Uh, So. I thought it's under fair use that you could use this stuff with the volume off. That it's under fair use. Like, and then we add our content, our our is, and it becomes original content. Exactly. Yeah. So with us speaking over it. They demonetized it and they buried it. So as far as doing watch alongs with with we're not gonna be able to do watch alongs because I think if I keep doing that and I keep getting strikes, they're gonna wind up shutting the channel down. So we'll have to do like I'll watch the trailer and then stop a part and then share the screenshot with everybody and we'll just talk mm-hmm. about that and we'll have to do it that way because otherwise there'll be no more red cup. We we got to do more research because people use copyright stuff all the time for the reaction videos. Man, come on. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. understand reaction videos either, Kev. I don't get it. Like watching someone's face watch something. 
I don't. Oh, that dude crying at uh, watching the friggin' uh, uh, was it the last Star Wars uh, friggin' pr- uh, teaser? Yeah, I, I don't. That, that, that grown man was just crying. He's like, oh, oh, Ray. <laughs> like he's never seen Ray in the same outfit before. <laughs> uh, I don't Ray know. Ray running to me. It's, it's, <laughs> that that just I don't. It's not something I would watch. I think it's ridiculous. Do trailer with action figures? Yeah, maybe we'll recreate the trailer with action figures. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then and then you know they're 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 riding on the skiff, right? And like you know, yeah. Poe Dameron's in the front and they're riding on it, <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> You know, Snoke is coming to get us. <laughs> Some shit. Uh, anyways, um, anything else, Baz? You want to talk about something else? Okay, the the latest Star Wars rumor that I heard. Okay, so now it's, it's getting – consensus is, is that uh, Rey is uh, the granddaughter of uh, – what you call it? The, what's his name? Uh, the Emperor uh, Palpatine. The new rumor is that grand- the granddaughter. Where are these rumors coming from? I want to know. All over the place, man. Uh, so yeah, she's the granddaughter because, uh, the emperor, uh, saw how, uh, Luke and, uh, Vader's bond was so strong because of the, because of the family bond. So he wanted to recreate that. And that's why he, he created Ray, you know, uh, whatever. So that's his granddaughter. Uh, so another room I heard, which I like very much is that she actually turns, goes to the dark side. And then she is going to be the Vader, the villain, the main villain of a, a new uh, group of movies, a new uh, uh, three movie set. Really? Mm hmm. Really? Which I like because then we'll see, you know, we'll see her grow into a villain and then she'll be the bad guy in the next set of movies. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, so. that's I, I kind of like that like the most, I think, out of everything I've heard so far. Exactly. Yeah. I want that to happen the most, but it's not going to. No, it's not. None of this is happening. You know yeah. what I think? There's, there's so yeah. many different uh, rumors concerning Star Wars. <laughs> They're almost like, okay, guys, we're going to have a live stream. And, and I'm going to say, all right, Baz, and all right, Rob yeah. Spolo and Kev's Matrix and Rob Just a Fan. We're all going to come up with our own theories. And then we're going to convene next week. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you know, put up Kev's Matrix uh, comment. <laughs> I'm your father's former college roommate. <laughs> oh God! So whatever, man. Yeah. So what were you saying? I'm sorry. I just I was, I was just cracking up. Oh, it's funny. Um, we all yeah. just come up with our own shit and say, let's just bomb the internet with with. Or think of anything you can. We're gonna come together yeah. and, and and see how different our our theories are, and then just put all the yeah. theories out into the world. They'll all be like secret red cup theories or some shit. No, I'm I'm hearing that Disney is actually doing this on purpose to gauge the audience, and that they filmed like a whole bunch of different endings. What? Yeah, and that that's and it, it's actually I think it is true that they're doing reshoots, which is like they really are. great. Yeah, they're doing reshoots, right? The movie's supposed to come out in friggin' December. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, you know man. That's what they're saying. Well, that like, you know, Lucasfilm is putting out all these different, you know, types of friggin' spoilers out, seeing which which one is the most popular and they're gonna go with that. All right. Here's my prediction for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. None of these theories are gonna be true. They're gonna play it super safe mm-hmm. so it's not completely destroy the franchise. And it's gonna be good, but it's gonna be safe and a little boring. Not the movie boring. The movie's going to be exciting and fun, but like the big reveal or the big whatever is going to be okay. That was safe. That's acceptable, mm-hmm. and without without pushing the boundaries or or coming up with something a little like you know Ray turns bad and she'll be the villain in the next movies. Like that's too, you know that's that's too cool. Like it's have, too risky. Yeah, too risky. We got to keep it super simple, safe. Stick figures with lightsabers. That's it. That would be so awesome, though. Right? Imagine her the bad guy of the next fucking group of films. Yeah. Oh, Chris Faulkner, I'm sharing this one. The future is social media affecting the production of movies in real time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. That's ridiculous. Um, I'll be honest. I think that, I think that that's the stupidest fucking thing in the world is having people actually having a voice. They gave social media gave too many idiots voices. Everybody yeah. excluded. Everyone in the in, that's that's watching this video in the future, and everyone that's that's commenting right now is excluded from this. But it gave 
too many too much power to fucking morons and sometimes i'm one of them all right there you go so i'll put myself in that too sometimes i say i find myself typing things out and then going mm, maybe i'll just erase that because you know it ruins art in many ways there you go chris gets the, the last two shares of the night baz i gotta close this down dude yeah um i was wondering what would break first your spirit or your body yeah my spirit's been broken. Everybody, yes. it was good to be back. It's so good to see you. There was a bunch of new guys in the chat that I've never seen before. That the, the judge dude who bang the gavel every time he shows up. Mm -hmm. It's good to see him again. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the Red Cup review. The next review coming this week is the Hot Toys Darth Maul DX17 or 18. It's going out the speeder because I don't need a, a Sith motorcycle. So I, I oh and Noble Young and here's a new guy I haven't seen before. Wait, no, I've seen him before. I don't think I've ever seen him on the live show or in the chats, though, before. So there you go. Um, there you go, Noble Young and Judge D Jack. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe. Uh, These are cool-ass names, Noble Young. That's a dope name. Yeah, word. It's cool. I like seeing new faces, man. I, I love seeing the old old faithful, you know, with uh, Chris retur returning a Chris. Rob, just a fan, always great. Kev's Matrix, you know, and everybody else. Archie joined us earlier. And uh, he's, you know, I'll be getting a thing with him at, at Comic-Con. We'll finally be able to meet and stuff. So that'll be good. All right, guys. I don't want to keep rambling on and on. Be well. All the best. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. And I will be back with Baz and maybe somebody else. We don't know. Next week. Thank you for joining us, guys. Baz, don't go anywhere. I'm going to end the broadcast. Yeah. Take care, guys. See you soon. Peace out. How do we end this damn thing? <laughs>